the final destination. No, I'm just gonna say right off the bat. This is the worst film in the franchise. I like at least all of these films, all four of the other ones, except this one. This movie is the most schlocky, terrible, unnecessarily stupid film of all time. And usually I would be able to watch these kind of movies and have fun with them. Like, I like stupid shit. I like Freddy's Dead. I like Jason Goes to Hell. I like Freddy vs. Jason. I like all of these kind of movies. They're just dumb and just don't really take them so seriously. But there's some points in this movie where it does kind of ask you to take it so seriously. And you're just like, I, I can't. I, I just, I can't. <laughs> this is really bad. Let's get into why this movie is so bad. Well, starting off with, it's in 3D. The 3D in this movie is, Jesus Christ, man. The 3D here is incredibly bad. Hey, let's just point an item at the screen to see if we get a reaction out of the, the people watching this movie. Ooh, it's in 3D. Isn't that cool? I hate 3D in horror movies. Jace, the only one that like does it even remotely well is, Jace, is Friday the 13th Part 3D, and that's because that movie was just made with the intention of that. This movie was made with the intention of it, but it isn't fun because you don't care about any of these characters. You're not here for anything that goes on in this movie. The plot in this movie is just so repetitive of the original films, the other four films. It's just not very good. It's just a very bad movie. And I can stop the review right there if I wanted to, but I'm going to keep bitching because I want to. And so let's get into the rest of this movie. So the movie opens up, and well, the past three movies, what was the great thing about those? The opening scene about how relatable it is. Have any of you guys actually been to a NASCAR race? Like, ever? No? Well, I haven't either, and so this makes the opening of this movie very unrelatable for me. The other three films, anybody has done those three things before. This one... Who's been through a NASCAR race that afford that is able to afford to go? Because <laughs> I can't, and I wouldn't want to either. But anyway, so the scene opens up, and we have this great. The music's nice in the opening scene. I like it. Um, but then people die, car crash happens, and it sets it up so poorly because when you open this movie, there's like, um, we don't know the characters. See, in the other three films, you knew the characters when they got introduced. You knew who these people's personalities were. Here, you just don't know who these people are at all. You're just like, why should I care about you guys dying or about you having a premonition of dying whenever I don't give a flying shit about any of you? And it's just like, okay. The movie is also strangely racist. <laughs> like, there's a racist character in this opening scene that's weird. There's a racist character later in the movie in this old man. It's just like, 2009, what are we doing this? Actually, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen came out the same year or so. Double racist in our cinemas in 2009, guys. It's, it's great. It's perfect. I love it. I don't actually. I want to slit my own head open with this movie's Blu-ray disc. <laughs> I hate this film. Um. Anyway, the characters. You don't like them. Main character, Nick. He has the premonition of these people dying. And right when they think, oh, we got away from it. These people die in the most idiotic fashion. The movie. Okay. After this point, the movie slows down a little bit to get to know the characters a little tiny bit. But the rest of the film... No, you don't know a single one of them. And so this says, hey, let's just start killing off people in the most annoying and most out of place fashion ever. And to me, that's the worst thing about this film. It's just, you just don't really care about any of these characters. They all have the acting level of like adult film stars in a sense. And even the people that you really want to enjoy in this movie, and the character of Nick, he's not a terrible character. I've seen the majority of these people in like CW shows and... They've been pretty good in those, like the Arrowverse, for example. They've been good in those, but here they are just not giving it their all at all. And the majority of the characters just aren't working. The killers here are just, like I said, they just, they go so quickly. You can't really get invested in any of these characters. There's like maybe one or two good kills here. One of which is the, um, the car wash kill, which isn't even a kill. It's just a scene that preludes to an actual kill that's going to happen later on and it's going to be happening in a few moments after this scene or while it's happening because it's like this death is trying to distract us i guess which is just an odd concept in and of itself but that's not even the worst of it because then they have such odd kills in this like the hair uh, hairdresser kill where you think it's gonna be in the hair where the woman's getting her hair done then oh no just a random thing hits her and she's dead and it's like okay cool 
Um, all right, that's a way to end that scene, I guess. But man, it would have been cooler if it ended with like a blow dryer like melting your face or something like that. You know, like you know, it's not possible. But this movie's already going into massive, ridiculous territory. So why not just go with it? You know, like why not just be odd, be crazy, be ridiculous. That's what three and two did so well for me. And those last two movies, while being ridiculous and crazy, are fun for a reason. You do get invested in these characters. There is some good drama in those two movies. Here, there's not much drama. Everyone's either an asshole, or they're obligatory, or they're oblivious, or they're just a racist for some reason, which is just so odd to me. The effects here are terrible. The movie is lit like it's on the studio backlot. Which apparently most of this movie was shot on a Universal Studios backlot, which is just so funny to me. But the movie just doesn't really warrant its existence. And I know that's a phrase that's thrown around so much in the film circle. That a movie shouldn't be have to warrant its existence. It's just a film and it's a creative vision. This doesn't really feel like a creative vision to me. This feels like more what people thought the Saw franchise was. Where it's just gory kills for the sake of gory kills. Characters you don't care about storylines you don't care about, plot lines you don't care about, when it's really just... It's not. <laughs> those movies are not. This movie is exactly what people think those early, later Saw movies are, and it's just so frustrating to me because this series is so good, except for this one movie that just doesn't do anything interesting with the concept. And you get to a point in this movie where it's like, after the swimming pool kill, which is so, so bad, and so that would never happen... But anyway, after you get past that kill, you were like, oh, so I guess we're going to be okay now. I guess the death is, like, leaving us, and they think they can go see a movie. They can think they can go do all this other stuff. And it's like, why would you think that? Why would you think you can just go about your daily lives thinking that, oh, nothing's going to happen to us. We're going to be fine. Let's go see a movie. And the fact of a movie theater kill is honestly pretty good. It's executed so fucking badly, though, because it just looks like a commercial. For Final Destination 3D or Final or D Final Destination, it's Final Destination 4, but it just looks like this scene was specifically for the trailer, because, like, oh, we can't get you out of the movie theater, you can't be in here. Okay, fine, there's a really good kill, not kill, but there's a good moment here, where there's, like, a fire extinguisher, there's some, like, gas that could be happening, and some nails, it's really good. That's the only big good scene in this movie. The rest of it just feels so obligatory, like they're just like, we have to make this movie, we have to make a four final destination. Why not just make it 3D? Oh, why not just get the worst acting involved in this movie? Why make them not just make the movie look terrible? And the movie loses every bit of credibility the first three movies gain. Because it just it's not in a situation that we all have been scared of, which the first three movies and the fifth movie does. It's not in the it's not a part of the franchise in the sense where there's no really, there's references to other characters, but there's also not. At the same time, it's like, okay, cool. And the characters just aren't taking the movie seriously. And the movie ends as a joke because we end this on this uh, escalator thing. And it's just like, all right, that's a nice way to end it. We're just thinking, this mall is just exploding. And then the movie ends with us being in a coffee shop, like, oh, everything's okay. We're good. And then boom, you get killed. And it's the worst effects I've ever seen in these movies, I swear to you. It looks hilariously bad. Um, yeah, Final the Final Destination. It's not good. Definitely the worst of the series. Definitely my least favorite of this franchise. One good scene, the entire movie. Don't care about the characters, don't care about nothing else in this film. It's pretty bad, so I will give the Final Destination a D minus.